Hey friends, Mark here at Whiskey Whistle, your wise choice in independent whiskey and spirits reviews. Today on Whiskey Review number 229, the third part in a Jack Daniels special here on the channel, we're looking at Jack Daniels Silver Select. Now, what is Silver Select, you might ask? Well, actually, it's a discontinued, but now recently, we'll call it repackaged version of the single barrel range of whiskeys from Jack Daniels. Jack Daniels is a Tennessee whiskey, a little bit synonymous with bourbon. However, it has an extra process uh, of filtering through maple char charred maple pieces. And uh, this gives it a special, we'll call it a mellowing as they, they refer to it anyway. So Silver Select, it's 50% ABV. It's a single barrel, so every barrel is a bit different. These are apparently one out of a hundred barrels from the whole range of barrels stored at the Brown Foreman Jack Daniels Distillery. Well, the warehouse. Now, this is barrel number 6-4720, and it was released on, uh, let's see, ja uh, no, 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 December 1st, 2006. And uh, the uh, Rick, it's from Rick number L08. And well, that's about all the information I have on here. So we've got the release date. We don't have the distillation date. Now, I've looked very closely. I can't find anything uh, to that effect. But we can guess that it's probably four years, possibly a little bit older. Uh, as it seems most of the single barrels are around about that age. The latest version of this, which is called, I think, simply 100 Proof, I believe it is bottled in bond, which I think also means that it's four years old. Now, let's stop talking and get that poured. And if you notice I'm in a different location, you're right, I am. This is a re-recording. The first one was ruined by my uh, fatigue. I was very, very tired. Look at the color of that. My goodness. Uh, I was very tired. Now, this is also very interesting. So, it's getting a little bit cold here. And this is, boy, quite a bit cloudy, in fact. So, I have a feeling that uh, this single barrel, Silver Select, Silver Select single barrel is unchill filtered. If you know that, please let me know in a comment. And if you've tried this, I'd love to hear from you. I can already smell that very rich Jack Daniels aroma. This is like, oh, this is like old number seven times an infinite number. Well, not quite. Anyway, let's say times 10. Boy, what a heady aroma. It reminds me something not unlike Crown Royal Hand Selected Barrel. Yes, it does. All right, better put the cap back on that one. Not a very effective cork, by the way. Anyway, hopefully I didn't lose too much to evaporation. I might have. And as you can see, I'm getting near the end of the bottle. What took me so long to review this? Well, I wanted to do a few Jack Daniels together, and I wanted to do them when my channel was getting to maturity, and I guess it sort of is. I hope so. We're getting near 1,300 subscribers. I wish we had more. Please subscribe. Where is it now? It's right over here. Please hit that subscription button right there. Click to subscribe to help out the channel, all right? Now then, here on Whiskey Whistle for the reviews, we're going to be looking at the color followed by the legs. What kind of legs has Jack Daniels Silver Select got? After that, we'll be looking at the nose, the palate, and the finish of the whiskey. Does it have a long or short finish? Pleasant? Unpleasant? Finally, we'll give it a Whiskey Whistle Whiskey Score. And I've been informed that Whiskey Whistle Whiskey Score is a good sobriety test. This was told to me by Hillbilly Wine. Good job with that one. So, let's get into it now. First of all, the color. Whoa, look at that, hey? Technology. <laughs> so, now you can get a good look at the color here. Now, I cannot. So, I'll let you have a good look first. Um, what do you think about that, that shade? It's pretty dark, isn't it? This is known as being very dark. And actually, until 2015, this was the highest proof available Jack Daniels. Now they've got a single barrel barrel strength that's out. 
And that came out, again, I think uh, summer 2015 in select markets. That would be a great one to try. And I think a couple of other reviewers have tried that one, including, I think, Whiskey in the Six and possibly Seattle uh, 2-4-something. I always forget the numbers of his, his, his uh, YouTube channel, but I think he has uh, tried that one. All right, now let me have a good look at it, too. This is definitely well beyond the teak shade and I wouldn't want to call it mahogany it hasn't doesn't have that quite have that dark brownish hue but uh, it's definitely got a like almost like a cherry wood reddish very very beautiful shade and someone had mentioned is it really important to talk about Jack Daniels color specifically old number seven and I say absolutely because it's all natural just as all straight American whiskeys and Tennessee whiskeys are, uh, they are natural in color. All right, so that was uh, the color. Beautiful shade. Now let's give it a look uh, and see what the legs are like. Let me just roll it around a little bit. Get the whiskey right up to the lip. And then we are going to go like this and see what happens. Well, very slow development of legs there. And you can see a little bit of sediment on the, um, uh, on the glass. Nothing wrong with that. But look at how the, uh, the, the secondary legs just sort of hang about right at the lip there. And you really don't have a lot of movement going downward. So we know this is definitely going to be a very thick, thick, rich feel in the mouth. All right, so that's the legs. Now it's time to move on to the nosing. Let's smell this beautiful whiskey. And right away I get a lot of caramel. Very rich caramel. Now this is, a, I believe, an 80% corn, 12%, yeah, that's right, 80% corn, 12% rye, and 8% malted barley mash. And I do notice the rye, especially in this. So there's a definite spice character here that you really don't get from uh, old number seven. And um, to compare to the single barrel rye, well, it's certainly not quite as spicy and not the same spice character. Now it hasn't got quite the same spice character as single barrel rye. This is more into the peppery end of things. Hmm, beautiful scent though. Yes, caramel and pepper. There's also a little bit of mashed banana hanging about in the back of the nose, if I can say that. But the caramel and the pepper, these are at the front. Bit of vanilla too. You know, classic bourbon characters. It's a Tennessee whiskey but it would classify as a bourbon, as I mentioned before. Mmm, that pepper. And maybe some barbecue type spices. You know, add a little bit of rosemary, a bit of oregano, a little bit of um, basil, fresh basil here. And absolutely, if I had a steak that was marinated with a little bit of this, I think that would be amazing. I really do. Oh, my mouth is watering. And these legs are driving me crazy. Whew. Look at that there. This is a much, oh, we get a much better show here now. Look at that. Beautiful legs. Well, it's finally time to taste Jack Daniel's Silver Select Single Barrel. Cheers, everybody. Hmm. This is very spicy, very peppery, a little bit dry, in fact, quite dry. 
a lot of caramel, not especially a lot of vanilla. A little bit of the banana is still there. And again, a little bit of these green types of um, um, savory spices. Mm. This reminds me a little bit of McCormack steak spice. I use that all the time. Let me try that one more time here. Cheers again. Mm. Now there is absolutely no comparison with this and with old number seven. Now this being one out of a hundred of casks, these would be the casks located at the tallest, the highest, por highest portion, the highest part of the warehouse where the greatest temperature fluctuations happen, giving it more expansion and retraction of the wood along with expulsion and soaking up of the whiskey into the wood thus giving it a much richer flavor. Now, this is not flannel. This is fact. Um, anyway, so there's, I guess there's going to be some of this inside your uh, old number seven, but probably not very much. Obviously, one out of a hundred casks would be put together to make that uh, old number seven profile. Hmm. Well, why not? One more little taste here, all right? Hmm. Now that my mouth is a little bit more acclimatized to that pepperiness, I'm getting a little bit more of the caramel and noticing a little bit more of a rich vanilla coming through. This is more like vanilla extract. The finish Let's talk about the finish now. Let me taste that one more time. Peppery and dry. Still very spicy. This is a real, call it a package deal of spice and pepper. And then it's rounded off with this little bit of a uh, little bit of vanilla. The caramel is still there. My mouth still feels very dry though. This is probably in the top 10 of dry whiskeys that I've tried, no matter where they're from. As I smack my lips, I still get a little bit of that mashed banana. And um, again, maybe something kind of like a, a salted, uh, slightly um, fried banana chip. Mm. Now, we're not quite done yet. We're going to add some water, first of all. I will add about 3 milliliters of water. And I've got about 25 milliliters left. All right, so 43% uh, is what we're down to here. Let's see how that changes the profile. A little bit sweeter and yet still very savory on the nose. And I can tell, I can tell that the, the palate is going to be a lot richer. Let's give it a taste. Cheers again. Mmm. Sweeter and yet still has this real spice forward, savory flavor forward flavors. I'm going to add a tiny little bit more, and I guess we'll be down to closer to 40% now. Did I like it at 50%? Absolutely, I did. In fact, I probably drank most of this bottle at full strength. Uh, and probably less than a third of it, maybe even just a quarter, um, uh, diluted. 
So why do it? You do it just because you want to see, is it going to be different? Will it be better? Will I like it more? Will I like it less? Will there be some unusual flavors that come through? And if so, that would be wonderful. Oh yeah. So now we're getting, I feel like I'm smelling even more of the rye here. It almost comes off as a high rye, even though 12% is definitely not a high rye bourbon. Okay. Mmm. Almost no dryness on the palate. And you're left with that same profile minus the dryness. And the finish, still very dry, a little bit thicker. I feel like I can still feel something in my mouth uh, to a greater degree. Mm. The finish now kind of reminds me of a mix of sweet and salty, sort of a, a chip uh, mixture, you know, pretzels and some sweeter cereals all mixed together. Very, very lovely. Now then, let's get on to the Whiskey Whistle Whiskey Score for Jack Daniels Silver Select Single Barrel. What's the score going to be for this one? Well, the Whiskey Whistle Whiskey Score for Jack Daniels Silver Select Single Barrel, 50% ABV, is going to be 88 out of 100. That's right, 88 out of 100 will be the Whiskey Whistle Whiskey Score for Jack Daniels Silver Select. I quite like this, and uh, I really enjoyed recognizing flavors that I had seen in other whiskeys, and yet also recognizing flavors that I noticed in Jack Daniels, both Gentleman Jack and also uh, the uh, old number seven. So, are we done? No, we're not. What are we going to do now? I want to run a little experiment here on Whiskey Whistle, a Whiskey Whistle Whiskey Experiment. The experiment is this. What would Jack Daniels be like if it had a little bit of peat content added? Let's try. The PX Casks, Pedro Jimenez. A sherry cask finished, triple, triple wood, triple matured uh, Lafroig. Lafroig, that's a, a Scotch whiskey, a single malt Scotch whiskey from the Isle of Isla, known for its peaty, smoky content. Now, this bottle was procured by Whiskey Whistle Whiskey friend, Joel Diamond. Joel Diamond, thank you very much for bringing this for me from all the way from Thailand. And uh, we split the cost and you barely had any. I owe you a big thank you. All right, let's have a little bit of a pour. Not very much, just a little bit. Can I control how much I pour in here? I really want to just put a little tiny little bit in. Ooh, there we go. That's enough. Just a hint. Of course, I spilled some on the outside of the glass, which is not good because that's going to influence uh, the smell, because it's very peaty. Try and get that off. And we want to make sure we get that all mixed up. Now, I can tell you right now that what's happened is it has become salty. So that slightly, just a tiny drop, of, did you see how little that was? That was a very small amount, probably less than, definitely less than three milliliters, perhaps only two. It might have only been one. So not very much. And it's had quite an effect on the Jack Daniels. Salty. It's got a salty character now. A salted caramel, kind of like um, uh, if there were a, a salted caramel apple, that's what it would be like. And it's really brought out some fruits. It's brought out a fresh apple that I didn't notice before from the Jack Daniels. 
And I don't think that's from that small amount of Lefroig. I think that's really just, uh, let's call it a synergy. All right, well, let's give that a try. Cheers, everyone. It's really added a very flavorful, very complex uh, bunch of flavors into the Jack Daniels. Uh, the sweetness is actually slightly more pronounced. The pepperiness has been, let's call it, subdued somewhat and um, uh, given a little bit of breadth of other sorts of, um, call those hot, uh, spicy flavors. And again, the finish also just has a little bit more warmth. The, the dryness, again, has been really um, mellowed out, so it's much less dry than I noticed before. Now, let's try adding just a tiny bit more mm -hmm. and just to see what happens. Why not? Ultimate control here. Oof, there we go. Sorry about the noise. Again, get that on the outside. Never a drop wasted here on Whiskey Whistle. Okay, now we are getting uh, a more pronounced peat content. So, in order, to, in order to preserve the character of Jack Daniels, I went a little bit too far. But, Let's see, now, now we've got a um, peat, peated Isla and Tennessee whiskey mixed. So it's a world whiskey now. It's a blended world whiskey. Uh, if this were uh, classified as a Scotch whiskey, it would then be a blended Scotch whiskey. Okay, you definitely notice the peat now. So that's a little bit too much as I mentioned. But it still has some very interesting fruity flavors, apple, uh, banana from the, the Jack Daniels is still there. Pepper as well as smoky undertones. All right, let's give that a try. This really tastes like a very peaty, blended Scotch whiskey now. Something with a lot of uh, sherry content for sweetness. And a lot of new oak, uh, new oak going on. Hmm. Well, that was a fun experiment. I think just a, a couple drops of peated whiskey into your Jack Daniels can give you a very, very interesting, warm, um, sort of a heartwarming, body warming sort of a feeling to the whiskey. A little bit too much and you get something that is very different from bourbon, still very delicious however. Hmm. This kind of reminds me of two brewers peated whiskey and maybe also a little bit like Stranahan's hmm well may as well finish it off well that was a fun experiment hope you enjoyed that <clears throat> now if you have been watching this whole video right till now Probably not very many of you. I'm guessing a few. If you have, then just hit that uh, click to subscribe button right here. That would be a big help for me. You'll help me by getting that video a little bit higher up in the search results from your subscription. And um, uh, also you'll be notified of all of the uh, latest Whiskey Whistle Whiskey reviews coming up. 
So hopefully that helps you and me, okay? Uh, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for what's to come. There is lots more, a little bit more bourbon on the way. Also some more Scotch whiskey and other content, some Canadian whiskeys, older ones, uh, some blended Scotch whiskeys also, old and new, all right? So stay tuned and we'll see you next time. Goodbye. Thanks for watching Whiskey Whistle. Be sure to subscribe and don't forget to give this video a like and leave a comment down below. Be sure to stay tuned next time to join me, the host of the show, Mark, as I explore more whiskeys with you. Take care now and we'll see you next time.